everyone and our large viewing audience. <laughs> Hi, Chris. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> it is April 25th. I'm going to call the school committee meeting to order and start with reorganization of the committee. I need um, a motion for a chairperson, a vice chair slash secretary, and that could be uh, as one motion or as two, whichever is your pleasure. Motion to elect uh, chairperson. Okay. Uh, m uh, move to elect you as chairperson. I've already been chair for two years. Yeah. You make a great chair. It's been two years though. Yeah. Do we have any term limits? No. <laughs> no term limits. Are you hoping for term limits? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't mind doing it, but I was we, if we generally if don't go beyond two. Afterwards. Well, you provide a good, balanced perspective. I like the way you run our meetings. They're very efficient. Um, you know, we've come into a nice groove with your leadership, so I vote to. Except I forget to turn off my phone. Does that count, for, Does that count for anything? <laughs> it's a call for another chairperson's job. We need to put in for this role. Now we're not live. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second. Do mm -hmm. we have any other motions for chairperson? No. Where's Perfect. Heather when I need her? All in favor of Linda Dunlady as chair. Aye. Aye. Thanks, everyone. How about vice chair? How about a motion for vice chair? Motion to elect. Uh, well, uh, uh, we were, I was just pinching for today. That was. Oh, that plan. was for today that only. Was just for today. That was my plan. Oh. Oh, so let's. Shall we go back <laughs> and start over? That was just for today because Heather couldn't be here. Yeah, I, I, I didn't think I was being recruited for. It. No, oh. you're talking about vice chair. Not ongoing chair. Vice chair. She's talking about vice chair ongoing. Oh, you're all set. I've recorded yeah. that vote. Yeah, yeah. We're, okay. we're on to the yeah. next right. vote. Yeah. <laughs> motion, motion to elect Heather for vice chair. I'll second. Is she interested? She was expecting to be chair, so I, oh, I, really? I think she'd like be okay. Oh, okay, yeah. good. Um, uh, so you seconded. Sure. And any other motions on to make? Okay, all in favor of Heather. Aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> I, don't know, I, I really wasn't expecting this. Thank you ever so much, people. <laughs> it will be my pleasure to serve another year. Excellent. Thank you. So th we now need to appoint policy, the subcommittees. We have policy committee, finance committee, capital, and CES. We do not need to do, do these tonight. So again, if people would let me know their mm -hmm. preferences. Policy, we know that we have the school meal policy outstanding. Do we know of any other work for policy, right? Only things that MASC may suggest or things that have mm -hmm. to do with regulations. So okay. for example, if there's changes in special ed restraint, anything like that. So when you're thinking about what to do, that's what policy will be working on in the next year. Finance helps Annie and Chris with the budget and usually goes before the um, town's finance committee and select board. The capital subcommittee, I think, will have um, a big role in the coming year. I think we need to do, um, I came up with three to four things capital needs to do. One is we need to make a formal presentation to CPA about the fields. And um, Heather and I, when we watched the Zaturka Park presentation, it was spiffy. We need a spiffy presentation for a CPA and all other committees. We need to prioritize our capital plan and that that task needs to be done before the end of this summer because it will be part of the five-year capital plan that will be developed by the capital planning committee. So we have two capital planning committees to assign, a school committee rep to the town capital planning committee and our mm -hmm. capital planning committee. And what's the third one? A CES representative. No, for capital, the mm -hmm. tasks for capital. I don't remember. It's a big... Big year for capital. <laughs> um, and then CES. Do people know what they want now, or do you want to contact me and um, 
Well, I, I was talking to Humera before the meeting. Um, CES's schedule of meetings runs from September to June. And mm -hmm. um, I would like to finish out the year until they're reorganized in September because I'm on the executive committee and the finance committee, which may meet over the summer. Um, but I talked to Humera about possibly taking it over for the next year. Oh, okay. Which I'm willing to In do. September. Okay, yeah, so we would have Roby May through September, August? Yeah, they, they, they're, they meet the end of the month. Okay. Humera, <sighs> September through next April. June. March. June. Oh, beyond our reorganization? Yeah, well, uh, ideally, because I just like evaluate their year. Meeting. Yeah, I just evaluate okay. the executive director. Okay. So that's it makes sense if you can. Yes, she's still right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Her How about the rest? Right. Are we ready? Uh, I'll do the capital. Okay. Stay on that. That's okay. Please. I'm happy to continue to do policy for continuity. I would prefer not to do capital. I'll do, I'll do capital with you. Okay. Okay. Let's not forget Heather, shall we? Heather's <laughs> been on finance. Okay. Heather's been yeah. on finance. So I'll ask Heather. My second interest would be finance. I don't know if that you need a second or if mm -hmm. I have yes. time. Mm -hmm. yeah. I need two. Except for CES. All right. You just got finance. Oh, if you take, then, okay. I'll talk to Heather, and Heather or I will take policy, and one of us will take policy, and one of us will take finance. Roby, mm -hmm. you just you just lost your roles unless you'd like to be policy. I'm fine either way. Okay. All right. We'll Can I just run through, because I, I'm not sure that I have the same ones that you do. So policy do just, is okay. Humera. Mm -hmm. Finance is Paul. Capital is Paul and Linda. CES is Roby, May through August. Humera, September through June. Mm -hmm. And then we'll finish up filling it up. Mm -hmm. And Paul, when you, capital, are you internal capital or internal and external with the town? <gasps> I just thought of the other role um, for the capital is okay. to be a the part right. of the municipal building committee mm -hmm. or at least to have um, mm -hmm the needs of the schools known by the Municipal Building Committee. Mm -hmm. So there's two capital, I mean yeah. two. What do you think? If I'm doing finance and that I'm worried about overextending. If I can talk Heather into <coughs> doing um, finance and, and either Heather or Roby to do policy, how about you and I do internal and I'll do external? Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Annie, you got that? So now finance is Heather. But we don't know about Heather. Policy, Humera, finance, Paul, our I'm internal. Sorry, you just, I, I'm sorry, I thought you just took Paul off of finance. Mm -mm. No? Okay. Internal capital is Paul and Linda. The town's capital planning committee is Linda, CES, Roby, and Humera. And Heather is a wild card, and we'll get back to you on that. Okay. All right. Policy, Heather, finance, Paul, capital, Paul, and Linda, Linda, external, CES, Roby. All right. Okay. Warrant signers. Well, you know I'm going to bring up why don't we have remote signing. Oh, yeah. I can get you the name that the CES does it, and they use an Adobe program if you need the name of a program. Yeah. I have to be honest. We, we discussed this with Mike. I just don't remember what his response was. After we do the budget presentation, I'll look through my emails because I believe his response was an email, mm -hmm. and I will let you know um, what okay. that was, okay? Mm -hmm. So do you want I, to hold I apologize. Up? I just don't remember what he said as far as the status of it was. So. I think at one of our meetings we talked about that, that you, I'm sorry, not you, I believe that Mike perhaps had identified a vendor and um, was it it, there was a cost associated with it. Yeah. I don't know that it was necessarily cost prohibitive. I believe I can pull back some old school committee minutes that we may have talked about the cost at a school committee and um, or maybe it was just in a conversation that you and I had had. But, um, so there was dollars a year was. Oh my God! What what, what vendor? Oh, what do you mean by a vendor? 
Uh, in other words, just paying for the service when I said vendor, just the well, service. It's not just a software program? No, we ha we have to That's we use DocuSign at the yeah. COG and yeah. it is there is an annual cost for it because the, because they are basically validating Learning. your signature signatures. that you are who you are via email. Okay. And keeping the and mutual records but secure. For me it's worth six hundred dollars a year to be able to do it online. Yeah. Quickly. Yeah. Agreed. Because okay. 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 people right. have one. Yeah. Thank you, Anne, for reminding me. I'm sorry. It's just uh, that's so. Do you need so you that. don't need a motion to spend six hundred dollars? Absolutely that. not. All no. right. I, what I really just wanted to make sure was that you were aware there was a cost mm -hmm. and that you were in favor of spending it. That's all. So. Mm -hmm. um, so. What are we what are we doing here? Do we need to do we need to assign primaries or if it's going electronic, we can all do it, right? Yeah, we can. That would be nice. Okay. Whoever sees the email first, the list is on yes. All right. So let's. Sorry about that. All right. So we're going to assume, Chris, that we're doing electronic and we're not going to assign primaries and secondaries because if it's electronic, we can all do it. Okay. If, so let us know if we need to quickly change that. All right. Good. All right. We have reorganized. Now we'll start looking at the minutes. Minutes of March 28th. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of March 28th, 2016 as written. Thank you. Seconded. Thank you. Any changes, corrections, additions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Beautiful. Any adjustments to the agenda? No. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Presentation. Mr. Chris or Ms. Annie. Who's doing it? He gets to push the buttons and together we'll talk about it. This is actually the presentation of the FY17 budget. Yes, the same presentation that we've given to Finance Committee. Yeah, that's fine. So in your packets you have the copy of the FY17 budget that um, the only adjustments I think made to the last copy that you had in your school committee packet was where we explain at the bottom of um, the total budget that uh, that $148,000 uh, and $8.12 would come from applying additional grants or applying additional circuit breaker and possibly using additional school choice funds. This was discussed by the school committee. So in the public presentation of the budget, we um, always remind the community that the school committee did had a retreat last summer and created a strategy where they delineated the purpose of the school district, its vision, our expectations of students, and our strategic objectives. And it is our goal to ensure that our resources, that we allocate our resources in alignment with those strategic objectives. We like to point out, um, although this can be a double-edged sword because as uh, we all know, school districts that become too dependent upon school choice revenue um, can set themselves up for um, some significant consequences in the long term. The good news is that um, our numbers are to the good, that we have now 104 students at last count, incoming school choice students. And we have 48 students who attend other districts who choice out of Hadley. You can see the numbers of students choicing out of Hadley is decreasing. Excuse me, I have allergies. And the number of students who are coming into the district is increasing and increased substantially between FY14 and FY15. And we still continue to see a climb. So that's good. But I feel like yep. that 104 number is reflective of basically current numbers. It was lower the first That's time we saw this, right? That's correct. Okay. So um, our school choice, what you saw the first time that you saw that was our projection when we were originally building our budget, what we took from last year, and then we took our actual number right now and updated that slide. Sorry. I'm trying to turn e it off too. E everything's going. Our FTEs, you can see that essentially where we ended actually in employment. Now, our, remember our FY16 budget, when we built the FY16 budget and started that process, we um, did not have 
all of our staff, our, our program at the elementary school was not fully staffed. But at the end of FY16, what you're looking at in that bar graph is on June 30th or the last day of the fiscal year, what was our, our full-time equivalent count? And that hasn't changed in, in fiscal year 17. This is some of the information that we have provided at our presentation to the Finance Committee, our presentation to the Select Board. One of the cost centers where we've seen the most significant increase in cost is in, is in instructional support services. That includes special education. And Hadley, like most districts across the United States, has seen an increase in students who are in need of services and an increase in students who have significant and substantial needs. And again, we're not, in, we're not different from anywhere else. We have a population that needs, requires specialized instruction, and we're happy to provide that, and we're grateful for the number of students that we can educate within our district, but it certainly has implications for the budget. This was the slide that was presented to us by the Hadley Special Education Parent Advisory Council. And the purpose of that slide was really to show that certainly we have a growing demand in terms of student needs, but we haven't responded by overstaffing our special education department by any stretch of the imagination. So what you see is a special education staff to student ratio, and um, you can see that for Hadley, we are one special education staff to um, 21 students, and in some of the surrounding districts, they have a um, much, they have far fewer students for every um, special education staff member. Is that students in need of special education? No, those are actually students receiving uh, on grid, right? So, is that a formative metric? Wouldn't you want to compare it to the ratio of students in need of special education? So, I'm... Um, because the special ed staff are attending to... To whom? So those are... those. The student count would be students who have individualized education plans. Okay, so it is. Well, okay, that's what I'm you sorry. mean by in grid? Yes, I'm sorry. So yes, they're, they the, are, yes. I thought you meant the total student body. No, 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 no. They are students who are, sorry, they're, they're, they receive services. The services okay. come on a grid, so I just used TechnoTalk, which I shouldn't have. That it's, so these are students with individual education plans. Okay. So you can see another place where we've had a significant increase in costs, and these are costs that are very, very difficult for us to control. At the top of that bar, the lighter blue, you see we've had an increase in Smith Vocational. That isn't a tuition increase. Um, Smith Voc's tuition has not increased for FY17. It's that we have more students this year who are attending Smith Voc. So we had an increase the um, current eighth grade class. We have a lot of students interested in attending Smith Voc. And at the bottom, you can see that our special education out of district costs. So these are students who are our fiscal and um, programmatic responsibility who are attending specialized schools outside of our public school district. And that cost has gone up by just around $200,000, just under $200,000. Um, this came up, this was a, a slide that we wanted the public to understand some, there was apparently some folks thought that perhaps part of the reason that the school department budget um, it has increased is because that the school department is not getting as many grants as it once did. There's, that's a true statement. It's not because there are grants that we are unsuccessful in applying for, as you can see actually Discretionary or competitive grants, it's that small number at the top, that has actually gone up um, from the 49 to the 67,200. It is that our entitlement grants, so grants that we don't apply for, that we get as a function of our demographics, of our enrollment, that that money has decreased 
significantly from 2013 and even more so from 2012. And I've explained before that there were grants such as Race to the Top and the American Reinvestment and Recovery Act, ARA, that provided a lot of money right after the 2008 crash, and uh, that money has since gone away. And Chris, do you want to talk a bit about our <coughs> pie graph slides? Sure. Um, basically, this just really breaks down the budget into uh, a number of pieces, just so you can see which percentage of the budget is made up uh, for each of those items on the right. As you can see, um, you know the majority of it would be in a salary situation. We've got this 23 percent, the 20 percent, 22 percent. Even some of maintenance in this particular slide is a salary item as well, um, but the majority of the uh, of the budget goes to salaries um, in both Hadley Elementary and Hopkins for both regular and special education. <clears throat> and really, to be honest, this this graph has not changed significantly over the past few years. It's you know it's been an up or down, one or two percent here or there. Um, it's it's been pretty consistent over the, over the past few years. Uh, on here, we have basically a, a less fine breakdown of the budget. And in this particular one, you can see, for example, the maintenance was 7% before we pulled the salaries out of it. Now the salaries are into here, and it's at 65.8%. So um, it just breaks it down a little bit differently so you can see how, uh, how different parts of the budget are made up. Um, the next slide will be the reserve funds projections. This is the school choice money. Um, as you can see, we started this year with $656,000 in that account. Uh, we project to finish the year at about $664,000. Um, that will actually change a little bit um, at the end of June. There's a, a SPED differential adjustment that gets put in at the end of June. I don't know what that number is at this point in time. We don't know, you know how much of that will be funded. So I really don't put it in there because whatever I put in is not going to be correct. So I, I prefer to just hold off on that. Um, and there is uh, some additional use that was voted in um, since this presentation was made, $20,000 to fund the school brains uh, purchase that we did. So that, that number actually is going to jump up a little bit. Um, so both of these numbers will be slightly changed. Um, the 523 will go up by $20,000, and the uh, projected ending balance will increase by whatever the spend is. Um, and then on, on FY17, you can see basically uh, how much we expect to take in. Again, that 520000 for FY17, it's, it's basically taking the 104 students that we get um, or that we have at this point in time times the $5,000 amount. Again, that, that's a moving number. It's, it's almost impossible, uh, if not impossible, to nail down precisely at this point in time. Students come and go. They transfer in and out. We might get partial year credit for a student. Um, again, the SPED differential comes into play here that you know, certainly at the end of FY7, we have no idea what that would be. Um, so again, that $520,000 is, is really um, more of a conservative estimate than anything else. Uh, and right now, of course, the budget shows the um, use of 525000 So the balance looks to remain relatively flat over the next couple of years to maybe a slight increase. Um, Although, in may I just add, the projected use in FY17 is also conservative because what that doesn't have on it is the $148,008.12. And it doesn't have that on that because we said that that would be a combination of circuit breaker and school choice funds, which we would come to... Um, you know, the school committee along the way and delineate specifically what was applied and how. You get that monthly in your grant reports, but then in FY17, you would also be apprised of how and when school choice and circuit breaker needed to be applied in order to maintain the budget. In addition to that, right now, Finance Committee had recommended an additional $75,000, excuse town me. Town Finance Committee, town not School Finance time, Committee. Town Finance Committee, thank you, recommended an additional cut of $75,000 from the FY17 school department budget. At a meeting on Saturday that Linda and I attended with the town 
Finance Committee, the Town Finance Committee said that it was their goal to um, fund that at town meeting in the fall. Public safety would be the first priority. Schools would then be the second priority, if I'm correct, Linda, with OPEB being the third priority. And there's another cost um, that we will be talking about in a bit more uh, detail at our next school committee meeting, but there's a special education cost that we will be incurring for fiscal year 16. The discussion of the cost is um, will need to be discussed in executive session. I'll have more information from council. We'll do that in May and then do the school choice vote in the public part of our meeting, an open session. But if you quickly do that math, even though that's an estimate, that projected ending FY17 balance, you see it at 659. Back out, I'm just gonna roughly say $150,000. Now you're at 509. I'm gonna round that down to five, add the nine back on the, on the other end. Uh, take out another $60,000 and you're down at 460. That's the unanticipated special education cost. And take out another $75,000, you're at 385. Add back in your $9,000 and you're at 394. Uh, you do have a school committee policy that you would be getting dangerously close to violating at that point. Um, your policy is clear that your school uh, choice fund should never dip below um, grant receipts from the previous year. So both are conservative. Sorry to do that math so quickly verbally, but both are conservative. Both are expected revenue, but also those expenditures. Okay, well, here is your, your policy on the uh, reserve fund balance. You can see um, basically, uh, cover unanticipated expenses, especially the SPED costs. Um, that's to stay above, I believe, the discretionary grants? Is that what it is? You want to stay above that amount? No, right now. All grant funding for the previous year. Yeah. Not yeah. just discretionary. Oh, okay. oh right. Um, it's, yes, I believe it's all grant funding is how it yep. leads for the previous year. Grant receipts for the previous fiscal year. Um, this was also to help the public understand, because we've talked about this a few times, that at any moment in time during the school year, somebody may pull a town report that um, indicates that the school choice balance may look like it's over a million dollars. And that's because although it is in the budget document, the application, for example, you have in the budget document, $520,000 will be applied in FY17 plus an additional amount that would be determined somewhere up to $148,000. We don't apply that right at the beginning of the year. Chris applies it at the end of the year. So it's sitting on all of those revenues are sitting there. We will get FY17's revenue. We will not apply the school choice money until the end of the year if you dipstick the school choice account um, in the middle of the year, it would appear that the school department is just sitting on a million dollars. But, but since it's not the tr that's not what is actually the case. Um, since this comes up every year, that every year as the town starts to do its budget, there's the conversation about, well, the school's sitting on a million dollars, which we know will not be true a month or two later. Is there any reason why we have to wait till the end of the year to vote the 520,000? Can we do it at the beginning of the year mm -hmm. so the balance never looks like it's a million dollars so that, because I think what happens then is that the town starts working on the budget and says, well, the schools can take a greater hit because look at all the money they have. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the problem with that, um, and by the way, those, those um, I'll take these off to look at you guys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That money has been transferred. We did it last week for yep. this fiscal year, so yep. the financial report that you see already takes that into account. But the problem with doing it right at the beginning of the year, I mean, we know we're going to have to use it, but if we did it at the beginning of the year, the prior slide you saw we started at 650000 so if we were to immediately take that 520 out, that would leave us with, you know, say, $130,000 in the account. Now, granted, we know that would increase over the course of the year, but at that point in time, but could we do it over time, over three votes, or is that a pain for you? Uh, no, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's really just an expense transfer from right. the local Right. So if we said choice. July 1, we're going we're gonna to vote 250000 of it. December 31st, we're going to vote, I don't know. I, I just, if there is a way that the balance stays, may, 
a similar balance and doesn't do this spike up because mm -hmm. that's what leads to the problem every year. Sure. Uh, yeah, we can easily do that. It's not a problem at all. So we should think about that and ha and. Okay. Mm -hmm. no. Okay. So um, on this slide, we have the budget summary. Uh, basically, the first number is the um, is the amount that was initially requested uh, with some service level increases. Um, the next number, the seven million eight ninety, is the amount that was endorsed by you back in March, I believe. Um, then we're taking out some revolving account money. Um, that's the preschool revolving account where we apply certain percentages of the building expenses that they are in, heat, light, etc., um, into that account. Um, school choice money used, grant money that we project. Uh, we'll be getting and, and we'll utilize in the next fiscal year, um, which leaves the total local contribution of uh, six million eight ninety five oh ninety nine. Um, the town was looking for a lower amount of an increase. So you can see the differential between the two is that one forty eight oh eight that Ann had mentioned earlier, uh, and that was using either additional school. Wow. And so, Chris, is that the 148 separate from the 75? Yeah. Um, yes. Um, I'm sorry, here. I think the cord maybe got loose. I, I don't the, know, but I lost it. It's on the, the back of the on the back of the projector, Chris. The blue cord all the way on the back. The blue cord is not used. That's not used. Well, you were very close to being done. Yeah. That you were on the summary and impact slide, and the. Yes, what now we first developed a budget with using 520,000 of school choice to match the amount of school choice coming in. We did a level services budget and realized that our level services budget would exceed municipal revenue growth. So we made the decision here in January, January February, February that we would voluntarily Offer to use an additional 148,000 either in school choice or in budget reductions. So we were matching municipal revenue growth. And since then, the Finance Committee has recommended another cut of 75,000, maybe to be replaced in the fall if funding is available. It is their priority to replace it in the fall, but we have been told we're second in line. But now you're back. So now I just did the summary and impact. <laughs> and, and here it is. Uh, <laughs> did I say everything? Uh, well, you certainly nailed that one. Um, when would we need to make a decision about the seventy-five thousand? Would we not do that until the fall, or would we have to do that? I was going to. I I was going to ask you that. I I don't know the answer to that. Why we need to? No. Decide. When will we oh, when? do the seventy-five thousand? Because. You know, if you wait until three months in the fiscal year to cut 75000 that's harder to do because you've lost three months' worth of reductions. Right. On the other hand, we hope to get most or all of it restored. Yeah, I mean, the thing is you, you need to submit a balanced budget um, so we, we wouldn't be able to just wait and say, well, we assume we're going to get it back. I, right. mean, I know the assumption is real. Right. Yep. Um, but nevertheless, what it does is it throws your budget out by that um, $75,000. So at the May school committee meeting, after town meeting, after the budget is endorsed, we're going to have to figure out how to, we can adopt the budget tonight as is, wait until town meeting, and then come back in May or June and adopt a budget again, depending Absolutely. on, okay. It would be May. True. It would have to be May. Mm -hmm. I guess. I guess that was it. Boy, good thing I came back online. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, any questions here? No. Is that is that seventy five thousand set, or is it? I know they they're planning to finalize the budget Wednesday. Is that correct? Still. Uh, Annie and I were at the finance committee meeting on Saturday, and they said the seventy-five thousand would not grow. Okay. I was at town hall tonight, and they said the seventy-five thousand would not grow. Okay. Right. But okay. 
Mr. Pipchinski uh, is our select board liaison. Welcome to the school committee Thank meeting. Thank you. Appreciate it. Do you have questions? Yes, I do. I have a couple. Uh, I guess my first one would be uh, the new house budget. There's additional funding coming in Chapter 70. And what do you propose to do with that? Offset the budget with it? It actually goes to the town, and the town's budget already assumes that it has been received. It's an extra okay. $20,000. So the shortfall at the town side is about 130000 with the 20000 already accounted for in the town side. Okay. Uh, the other thing is uh, Article 13 on the Warren article. I asked my colleagues, I asked the Finance Committee, where is this grease trap that there's a problem? No one knows which school it's in. I had no information, and so I want to know where the estimate come for the 30,000. And in my mind, I think we're starting a bad precedence by going to the sewer reserve. It's not intended for your own budget's plumbing problems. Well, you know, you may have a different attitude towards Chris, it and why. I would you, like to know. You talk why. about the budget, I'll talk about the sewer reserves, although that was not a school well, committee decision. Well, first, first, uh, Mr. Waskevitz, as the sewer person in Hadley, has told us we have to comply with state law, and that's why we're in, that's why we have to get these okay. installed. Uh, we have put it off for long enough, and we can put it off no longer, and that's a direct according a to direct Mr. Waskevitz. We would put it off because <laughs> we don't produce grease based on. Feedback from students. Well, it, based on federal nutritional guidelines, we do not deep fat fry our foods. We are not allowed to deep fat fry our foods. We're not producing grease. There is a town requirement. The sewers, the sewer system requires that all, all places that serve food have professional grease traps. It's and external Mr. grease traps. External grease traps. And Mr. Washgavitz says we can no longer wait. Price. He's expecting you to adhere to the same regulations that our businesses have right. to in essence. Exactly. Yes. Yep. Okay, I understand but, that. But we and don't, both schools, the elementary and this one, have to be upgraded. Yes, because That's we don't right. have them currently. We have internal grease traps that have recently okay. been repaired, but we have not. We've never had external. Grease I traps wonder why the one in Hooker School isn't being addressed then on Council on Aging. They have the same problem: a grease trap. <laughs> don't know. I don't know either, but he hasn't mentioned that yeah. one, and it's the same situation. Uh, where do you come up with the thirty thousand? Is that from Mr. Wiskevich, our bids? No, that was uh, that was from our facilities director. Uh, just spoke with somebody, an area vendor, and that was the price he was given. Um, we have not gotten official quotes yet because we didn't even have any funding. You know, we hesitate to get official quotes on a job because basically we're asking contractors to. You know, devote a, a fair amount of time to come up with a detailed quote, and then budget falls, then funding falls through, or something. So, so in essence, a bid process will be initiated, it, it and will vendors have to be will a bid vote process, on it. But we will um, get prices from three vendors. Okay, that would be good. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. One other problem I had, and I th consider this a real serious problem. Uh, I was going to Worcester to the game. I was going 68 miles an hour. Okay. And somebody in my car said to me, how fast are those two school buses going if they passed you out? These were our two buses going to the game with our students on them, the FEP buses. State law says buses will not travel over 55 miles an hour on divided highways. That bus had to be going 75 miles an hour when it passed me out. And I was highly emotional when that, I see that. And I probably should have brought it a different area, but it was bothering me so much, I thought it had to be brought up and the vendor has to be notified. I appreciate uh, your concern. I appreciate you letting me know. And so what I will do is identify which buses were used for that and um, identify, we can also identify the speed that the buses They weren't our buses, on. they were vendor buses. I know that. Okay. By the labeling on the buses. Okay. And I just don't want to state the names. That, that's I appreciate irrelevant. that. I you can know. absolutely, I assure you I'll follow up, and I appreciate you letting me know, Mr. Pichinski. And I'd like to thank you, too, for voluntarily cutting your budget. You know, initially, it's a tough time right now for the town, and many things are happening. Everybody wants, everybody wants new buildings, and we just don't have the funds to pay for these things. And some priorities have to be set. Uh, I've always been a champion for the schools, and I will continue. 
we'll never have football, we'll never have uh, hockey in this school, but if we send our children to this school, they can leave with a quality education. You know, my daughter graduate, I'll be graduating from this school next year, will be 50 years, which is a real milestone for me. But my daughter graduated from here in 2000, and she really didn't like school, she hated it, but she found a teacher she loved, Mrs. Manko in the Home Economics Department, and she bought the best out of my daughter, and today my daughter's a master chef because of her. My son, when he was eight years old, my wife took him to the university, and uh, he went into the pharmacy with uh, Joe Pilas, you probably all know him, he's selling the stones and stuff, and he took him in there, and ever since he was eight years old, he wanted to be a pharmacist. He took all the AP courses here and everything, and he could compete with any student in this country, you know, with the education he got here. So I'm very proud of what you do and appreciate it wholly, believe me. You, know, you do a good job, and the town should know it. Um, Chris, for next year, I noticed that uh, Hadley Television was having a little trouble putting, getting the slides to differentiate the blues. It would be great if next year when we create the, the bar charts with different colors, if we could make the colors diff more, Actually different rather than more contrasted. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. I, our camera person, I believe, is in agreement with that. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the other thing is, I think town meeting is next Thursday and there is some possibility I will be driving home from Washington DC who do we have school other than the budget we have no other articles well, except the, for the, the grease the traps, grease traps. The, oh, the budget grease traps. and the grease okay. traps is anyone going can anyone go to town meeting May 5th May 5th 7 o'clock you'll be there okay I can definitely try okay so I'll can I, can I just I'll I'll keep in touch with you guys to let you know how I'm doing and then Chris and Annie I was I I would like um, as a summer project this is your summer homework <laughs> is for us to come up with a five-year plan three five-year scenarios three five-year budget scenarios one would be um, looking at FY17 budget levels and how we would cope with that, with those assumed budget levels over the next five years. One would be what we think a level services budget would be over the next five years. And the third would be um, not going crazy, but looking at what are our needs, like funding technology, like looking at whether we need another teacher in the elementary school. So some conservative enhancements to the school and what the five-year projection of that would be so that we can begin to look at really what are the school's needs and begin to work with the town on that. If I heard you correctly, that first one... Uh, the first so one is more of an impact budget. Well, exactly. So you're saying level funded five years what are the implications for service reduction if we had level funded for five years level funded at this at fy17's FY yeah. level and um at fy17's level again backing out the essentially two hundred and twenty five thousand uh, dollars so right. the local contribution you know, we want to right? do the two hundred and twenty five thousand or the three hundred if we what do you guys think about the seventy five thousand Two hundred twenty-five included seventy-five thousand. One fifty plus. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you? I, I just direct me on that. Do you? Yes. How has the town been talking about it? Is it a permanent cut? Is it a? They the seventy-five thousand. They yeah. they're committed it's, to restoring it at fall yeah. town meeting. Yeah. Um, if there's if there's, if there's money in free cash is where it would come from. Right. So if there's money left over when this year's budgets are reconciled. Um, that's where the money would come from. There's always a grab for any free cash. We don't know if there'll be free cash. Um, so it's it's risky, and we're second in line yep. at this point. And something else could come up that would so, change yeah, the priorities. I assume we're not getting it. <laughs> Hope we'll get it. 
Yeah. And is that something, is that an impossible assignment or something that you guys think you can do? We can do it. Right. We can do it, but that local contribution is FY17, um, local contribution minus, on our slide, minus the 225. The actual yes. local contribution is voted on town meeting floor. I should say this more simply. Whatever's voted town meeting floor is uh, it's local contribution. That's what we use for the yep. level funding and yep. the implications. Okay. And then level services um, and what that essentially and what the cost requires, is. implications yep. and what the cost of that is, and then um, a conservative enhancement based on needs. That'd be awesome. Five-year projections for each one. Yes, please. That's good, yeah. Anything else while we're on the budget? Okay. Personnel report. Okay. So we have, you can see, we had an appointment for a French teacher. We have appointed um, a music band teacher. Um, and we still have some vacancies, still working on school psych. Some things changed for us. Uh, the person who originally thought that uh, she wanted the position has um, made some other decisions. Um, and as you know, we have several kind of interviewing committees underway and search committees underway for other positions. Thanks for agreeing to be on the principal, interim principal. You're welcome. It just so happens that every one of the dates for interviews and deciding on job descriptions happen to be available on my calendar. Not wow. for the month of May. It wow. It's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're grateful for that. Are we still discussing budget issues? No. No longer? No. But we're going into the public comment period. <laughs> there you go. You. That was a quick opening. <laughs> just, just a quick question on an override vote and your opinions as board members. I think I would favor an override vote now if it's spelled out exactly where it's going. Uh, we have other problems, our infrastructure. That was brought up and it's a major concern. Why build new buildings if you can't get water and sewer to them? It doesn't make much sense. One thing. Just two days ago, we found the leak that they couldn't find for five years where we were losing almost 200,000 gallons mm. of water a day. That's a real plus for us. Mm. Yep. You know, so, but I guess just a quick opinion of your board, how you feel if you would need an override, would you like one, or would you try to live with what you have today? Uh, I personally do not see how we can live with the FY17 budget levels that the town is giving to the schools. I think we have... For FY17? I think, I think we can make it through FY17. I don't think that, that $225,000 below what we consider a level services budget is mm -hmm. sustainable for very long and that we need to do something else. And I also, as I've said many times, I do not think that we should be only looking out for the schools. We are one town. We have needs throughout the town. The school budget is about 42% of all the town budget, yep. which is very high. And one thing I'm going to try to do. It's not high. That's no, not no, I'm not saying it's, you're most high. Most towns but have it higher than no, no. the proportion than, than no, you No, it's just 42% of the overall budget, I'm right. saying. It's not high for probably a school department. But it's very imperative that I think we reinstate the tri board. That should have never been disbanded and everything I've learned along the way. I've been given fallacies why it was disbanded and apparently the finance committee and the school committee were getting smarter than the select board and knowing more information they did. And that's the thing I get out of it. And that's the reason of a tri board. So everybody's on board and everybody's getting the same information all the time. Uh, the Finance Committee's budget literally scares me. They're trying to implement things in there that we don't even have. They're trying to get 37000 from the Mullen Center and uh, football stadium on meals taxes. Amherst has been after that for five years and they can't even come close. And they think we're going to get it. We've got solar panels that have to be built you know, before a certain date to include that money. Uh, medical marijuana, we haven't even voted on it. They're plugging money in for that. You know, like $100,000 and deferring things like COLA, 
things like that. Almost 500,000 to the fall meeting. And I just can't see, I envision, they say, right now we have 327 in free cash. We're certified with $2.39. I talked to the assessor's department. They're saying we've got about 140. So there's, you know, almost 200,000 that somebody's saying we've got and somebody else is saying we don't. And I can't get the true figures. That really scares me, you know, and I just don't want to see town meeting become a fiasco. The old finance committee is upset and they're ready to come to town meeting and tell everybody what's happening. And if we have them up against the new finance committee, it's going to be chaotic. So we're trying to organize ahead of time and this is why I'm talking about the override. Maybe it could be a salvation for everyone. I don't know. Um, you know, there's again, no easy answers. I, I don't think the town is prepared for an override for anytime sure. soon. For FY17. No. no, no, I don't. No, I think it'd it be would be probably the fall meeting we're um, looking at. No, no I don't think they're prepared. I think it will take at this point. It'll take a, a lot of preparation. A lot of preparation, a lot of education, a lot. To your point, that we would need to very clearly explain why it's necessary and how it would be used and why it's important. And that I think. I don't think we rush into that because if we want it to pass, we need to work hard to get everyone in the town educated. I don't either, but the general public has to be educated what the situation is. Absolutely. And if we do our part as a school committee and a select board and we put it out there, they have the opportunity to vote yes or no. Yeah. And we've done our job to present it to them. That's my idea of the whole situation. Chris, you're on. Business manager report, please. First up, we have the expense report. Um, again, as I mentioned, this is with the um, salaries transferred, or $520,000 in salaries transferred over to the school choice account. Um, you know, we're, we're winding down near the end of the year at this point in time, obviously, and as a result, the budget does get more tighter at the closer we get. So. Um, Again, nothing that I'm concerned about or anything, just that as it gets as it gets tighter, so do my fists when I sit around. <laughs> <laughs> but really, you've been so relaxed all year. It's highly unusual. Isn't it? <laughs> it is. Uh, so, you know, again, really, I mean, things are, are still really going according to schedule. Um, and I, I don't really foresee any issues um, at all. I don't know if you have any questions in any specific lines or anything. Um, I do not have a revolving accounts report this month. Um, I don't have the data for uh, March 31st, but I will I will update the data for March and include April's as well, if that's okay with you for the next mm -hmm. meeting. Yep. Okay. And then the grant report, you can see again, um, they are coming down a little bit more every month. Um, one of the grants is, is used completely, and actually um, very shortly another one, the 274, will be completely used as well, so that one will be finished up. Um, we can carry over a couple different grants, the Circuit Breaker certainly, which would be nice to carry over. Um, the Title I we can also carry over, that will most likely not have anything to carry over, um, as there's only about, we'll, we'll say $8,000 left to spend there, and then the expenses shift over to the Title IIA teacher quality money, um, and that will wind it up at the end of the year. Uh, so again, they're, they're coming down nicely. Um, Certainly, you know, nice to see the kindergarten grant is another one that we're, you know, the next payroll that'll be the end of that one. So, um, you know, no issues at all that I can see. Right. So I guess I can relax again. Yeah. <laughs> Unclench your fist. Yeah. Can I ask another question of that? Uh, do you have any problematic areas now where you're taking from other line items to augment them? Are uh, not at this time. To augment grant? Oh. No, no, I'm talking about your whole budget where oh, some line happens. items are completely overextended and you're already drawing from other line items to cover those. Absolutely. If that happens, or do you have any here. major ones? I'm talking thousands of dollars or no? Um, there have been some thousands of dollars, not tens of thousands okay. or anything like that, but over a thousand. Yeah, we've had some. But the overall budget is in balance. That's correct, yeah. Yes, okay, fine. Thank you. And, and that happens on a pretty regular basis mm -hmm. where, you know, sometimes you just get 
either expenses that exceeded what you had planned on, yeah. um, or sometimes you got a better deal than you had planned. Most of the people in the general public don't know it could change fifty thousand dollars just by transporting a special needs student right. out of town. Absolutely, yep. that could change your budget overnight and back. You know, yep. so. They have to understand, you have to have the money in your budget to cover all avenues. Mm -hmm. That is true. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Humira, Parent and Community Survey. <laughs> yes. Um, well, we're excited to have the second uh, parent survey that'll be done by the school committee. Um, last time we did this, did this was in 2014, and it was a big help and uh, informing our new administrators and our strategic plan and so we're excited to revisit that. The biggest goal in my mind is um, reducing the time to completion of this survey. I think some parents reported taking like an hour to do the survey. We, we just we can't do that. So really focusing in on the categories that our strategic plan determined as important um, and maybe attempting to have it is what I'm aiming to do. Um, so I have a draft um, in your inbox, um, and I would love it if you could take a look at it and revise. My goal is to try to get it out by the next school committee meeting, perhaps beforehand, so we can at least get the process started. Um, and the, um, the document that I sent outlines a fairly similar process to last time where we'll, we'll be recruiting parent volunteers to take the survey, time it, give us feedback on the questions, um, and just make sure that it's what we want to gather for feedback from parents. Um, I do have a question around whether, like last time we did this, we didn't have one call, and I'm wondering, mm -hmm. might that be a really efficient way to ensure mm -hmm. that we get all parents? Mm -hmm. um, so that would be phenomenal if we could do that. Mm -hmm. uh, I do have other questions about the execution from last time, like translation and things like that, yeah. so I will um, hope to work with um, my colleague, who's not here. Heather. Heather. <laughs> <laughs> Um, not that. the only one who names. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, um, so that's the plan. Good. All right. So, okay. your hope is, look, go to your inbox, please. And did you do it with track changes, or this is just a reduced survey? What are we looking at when we get there? It is not with track changes. Um, I could send you a version of just the questions with the eliminated questions. You'll see a lot of redundancies. We oh, ask yeah. like. You know, are our library materials uh, sufficient? Twice, for example. Mm -hmm. So I'll just remove. I can do. I can send one other one if you wish. But the document that I um, have sent you has just the questions that I propose we move forward with. Okay. Seems good. Well, You'd like that within the next week? Uh, it's in your inbox. You'll have it before you get home. No, he's saying edits. Oh, edits. Uh, yeah, edits by a week would be phenomenal. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And we don't we don't need to vote to move forward with that. I don't think so. I don't think okay. So. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks You're for welcome. cutting it down. You're welcome. And that will go to parents and community. And parents, then are we also parents. doing parents only? In the oh, parents only. In both schools. Mm -hmm. yeah. And are we also doing a teacher and a student one this year or no? Um, I hope so. Though that was led directly by the principals. Yes. Okay. All right. So we, right, we right, should right, ask right, them right. at the last okay. at the next meeting. Um, Roby? Yes. Um, uh, first, uh, the collaborative is grateful to the Franklin COG for giving us meeting space in Franklin County. Thank you. Oh, Did you know that? <laughs> I knew that that was a request. You are so welcome. My pleasure. Oh, good. Everyone was Have relieved you been there? to hear that. No. Oh, truly. I've You've heard, heard it's nice. It's a beautiful building. Come up and visit I've me. heard the meeting room is very nice also. The meeting room is beautiful. Yeah. Um, so the collaborative at our last meeting talked about uh, some local school committees are working on, res have made resolutions affirming students' right to opt out of standardized testing. Swiss River and Amherst uh, gave permission to teachers to talk to parents about opting out, and Amherst actually like passed out forms for kids to say they wanted to opt out. They can do that? Yeah, apparently so. So. Students can opt out yes, of um, MCATs? Yes, and um, yeah, oh yeah, New York State's been, did it a lot last year. It was a big, big deal over there, popped it out of the park. Um, <laughs> yeah, and so I guess um, in Amherst they passed out cards and kids would fill it out and then the school would call the parent and say, your daughter has indicated that she would like to opt out. 
Is that okay with oh, you? Oh, they gave the student the choice. Even the student the choice. In Amherst. I'm not sure how it worked in Swift River. I think that in Swift River, teachers had meetings that parents were invited to about the opting out process. So, um, we also had a presentation on healthy families. Um, spiffy data. I don't know if Paul is familiar with spiffy data. Uh, it's a survey that happens every other year uh, about uh, school climate. It asks questions about bullying, how safe people feel in school, drinking, drugs. Um, the Hadley data is available mm -hmm. through Annie. Mm -hmm. And um, well, we have received a presentation on the Hadley data in the past. That's correct? right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Do that we have new numbers. Renee now, came we in. We do have new numbers, yeah. and we are prepared to do a presentation to the school committee. Um, we've just looked at the agendas for the last few meetings that we've right. had, and they seemed rather packed. And so, adding another presentation on top of it, but well, we absolutely, Renee is prepared to do that. We do have the spiffy data. Does and she I've work through the summer? Mm -hmm. Uh, she's in some hours during the summer, but she's not. She's in. Uh, she's on the teacher school year. She's a, a ten month employee, um, but I'm sure she'd be happy to. We could talk about when we could do that presentation. I've been working with the Spiffy Strategic Planning Coalition, so I was the representative because Renee wasn't able to do that. Um, so we've been looking regionally at what areas we want to focus on in order to improve. Uh, outcomes around risk behaviors for adolescents and young people. And um, in light of the legislation on lifting the charter cap um, and a possible referendum, there was discussion about CES developing a survey to identify uh, indicators of why parents choose public schools. Um, I, I, there has been very little public research. Public schools versus charter? Charter. Okay. There's been very little research um, done. So there was discussion about CES possibly doing some work on that. Other than that, we're evaluating the executive director. Um, can I go back? Stuff. Can I go back to Spiffy? Mm -hmm. I thought the last time we had a presentation on Spiffy, they had informed us they had lost their funding. Well, apparently not. Their healthy families is booming. They've got okay. Spiffy. They've got a Hampshire County stuff. They've got social norms campaign. Huh. For LGBT students. And All right. Yeah, they got lots going on. Good. Yeah, that is good. Um, I think we forgot to uh, adopt the budget. That's yep. Yeah, it's listed as a small thing. <laughs> Do we have to? So. I don't know if people need to go back to uh, the final number, but we would be adopting a budget of. Hold on, who can get me there? Okay, I think I think our auditors would like the motion to have the exact dollar amount in the motion. Okay, that would be seven million eight hundred ninety thousand one hundred forty-nine dollars and two cents. Really. <laughs> Okay. Would anyone we like probably cut out the two cents. <laughs> <laughs> motion to approve fiscal year twenty seventeen budget of seven million seven million eight hundred and ninety thousand one hundred and forty eight dollars and two cents. Forty nine dollars and two cents. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Um, designation of library surplus. Annie sent us a gob of information prior to this meeting. Does anyone have questions for Annie on that? No. Okay. Can I get a motion for... Uh, to accept the proposed library surplus? I, is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Designate? I don't know what the motion is. Yeah. They designated Designate the surplus. library surplus as presented. So a motion to accept the proposed designation of the surplus library materials. Thank you. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. We are going into executive committee, right? Yes. Did you have, you didn't put a superintendent update on this? I, under the um, public presentation, well, no, I just had the budget in, in lieu of a superintendent update. Oh, okay. You got anything else for us? <laughs> focused on the budget. Okay. What's the language? Um, it's on the second page of the agenda. It it's is. 
All right. Well, and we're not going back, coming back, correct. right? It's in the vote. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would anyone like to make a motion to go into executive session? I'll make a motion to go into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining. Um, I have determined an open meeting will have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the public body and not to reconvene an open session. Second. Kamara? Aye. Roby? Aye. Paul? Mm -hmm. Aye. Aye. All right. Nicely done, people. Good meeting. Any comments on how great of a meeting it was? <laughs> Thank you so much. It's obviously the chair. Oh, did, we, did we just, was that, did that count as an adjournment? Yes, I think so. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. See you Thank all. You. See all of you. <laughs> Our vast audience yeah. on. Oh, we should look at the date. On the 23rd. Yeah, when May 23rd. Can everyone 23rd. be there? Right. Roby, do you need to sign this one? You don't need to sign this one. Uh, Homer signed it. Okay. Did. Yes. Yeah, I have. I just want to make sure that nobody else. You did sign it. I do. I yeah, you got three sure. signatures. I'll sign. I'm happy to sign. I didn't know. May 23rd, we have a quorum? About 30. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Mr. Pipchinski. Thank you. Thank you, Hadley Community Television.